Hey, what's up guys? It's Sam from Local Dialect here. And today I'm going to show you a trick in five minutes or less to take your arrangement from 16 bars to a full-fledged and flowing pro track. So what's the best way to sound like the pros? That's copy the pros. And I know before a lot of you guys jump in and say, well, I have to have a totally original arrangement. If I copy someone else, who's going to like my music? And first of all, let me say that that is a great approach to making music especially if you're trying to be unique in, in a genre that's very much oversaturated or has a couple of big guys at the top of it, you know, that really dictate the sound. I think being unique, creating your own sounds and melodies and using your own samples is great. But arrangement is one of those places where trying to be unique can very, very quickly end up in a track that just doesn't cut it. And I think I would become very, very comfortable working with a standard arrangement before jumping out and moving into these arrangements uh, that may not necessarily be as traditional. And there's a reason they're not quite as traditional. Arrangement is pretty limited. So in the same way that once you're super knowledgeable about theory, it's okay to break the rules and get outside the box a little bit. But as same as with arrangement, I think it's good to know the rule book backwards and forwards before you decide to start breaking any of the rules. So Let's jump into the DAW here. The best way to sound like the pros is copy the pros, as I said. So the way that I would do this is actually to drag a pro track. Now today I don't have a pro track just because I don't want to steal anyone's track and play it on YouTube here. But I have an unfinished local dialect track that we copied a pro arrangement for. And so I'll break down the arrangement for you guys and what I would do to get this arrangement in my DAW and copy it for a project that I was working on. So the easiest way to do that is by dragging it right in to the DAW at the top here and using the waveform to figure out where all the breaks are. Now for most tracks, they'll be in bar like groups of uh, 16 or 32. And so uh, you can definitely see that's the case here. So starting off intro with a high passed kick. I like to take notes on big things that seem to be important to energy flow or how the track is building. So, intro with a high pass kick. Let's jump to the next 16 bars here. Looks like something comes in. Okay, so here we go. We have intro P2 or part two with a full kick plus drums. Plus drums. <laughs> And so I would just take notes on, you know, some people don't like to clutter it up up here. Some people don't mind it. I would just take notes on the necessities here and you can sort of break down on a piece of note paper or something if you really want to delve into the arrangement and figure out, uh, which I think is a great idea, by the way, to figure out where the artist brings in certain instruments or where they take out the bass or where they start their risers, etc. All these things you can take from a pro and analyze and then use what you like in your own um, arrangements and your own songs. So moving on here to bar 32. Seems like the kick cuts out. Yep, this is going to be break number one. Now it seems like the kick comes back over here. Yep, so there's drop one, kick plus bass. So uh, that's another point in which I probably, all right, seems like you bring in more instruments here. Yeah, I'd probably skip to the end of the drop wherever that's gonna be, probably 32 here. Yep, and so the kick drops out there. There's the new break, break two. This break's actually a little short. That's something I'd probably take note of on a piece of paper. Yep, and so there is drop two. Again, it looks like it doesn't go on that long. This one's actually only 16, seems to be short as well. And now it seems like there's a longer break. Ooh, yeah, mm hmm So it seems like there's break three is long break, which is actually double the length of any of these other breaks before it. Um, and then, so this break was actually only eight. This one was 16. This one's a whole 32. As you see, there's no kick all the way over here. Then we move into drop three. Bass plus kick again. So it seems like drop three, but then yeah, so everything comes in here. And that's a trick that I think I'd like to, that I would point out in the actual track 
just to guide the actual decisions when I'm laying out my own track. Drop three, I usually call this section all in, which means that basically every instrument is playing. It's the most exciting section of the whole track if you're doing the arrangement correctly. All right, and so let's see how long this goes. Seems to go all the way down here. Yep. Okay, so this is outro, and this is outro P2. Let's see what goes on over here. Again, the waveform's changing. That's why I'm jumping to that section. And so, yeah, outro P2, it looks like there is the same high-pass kick. So, with that in mind, I would lay out my own track and just straight up copy this arrangement, figure out what instruments and drums corresponded to the instruments and drums just roughly you know you don't have to be exact the in the pro track and break it down and lay it out exactly as is and then you can sort of diagnose on a listen through of your own track whether the arrangement's working or what parts need more work anyways guys that's a nice little hack to speed up your arrangements and get something that flows quickly and you know that is our number one mission so anyways guys hop into your daw implement this technique and we hope to see you at our remixing and eq workshops coming up at pure mind